Hi, and welcome to Day 8. We're reading Preparing for Passover, a 14-day devotional for the days from Biblical New Year to Passover by Tina Chen. Day 8. Swarms. Read Exodus 8, verses 20 through 32. I'll be reading from the WebUS translation of the Bible. Yah said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Behold, he comes out to the water and tell him, This is what Yah says, Let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and on your servants and on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground they are on. I will set apart in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end, you may know that I am Yah on the earth. I will put a division between my people and your people. This sign shall happen by tomorrow. Yah did so, and there came grievous swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses. In all the land of Egypt, the land was corrupted by reason of the swarms of flies. Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God in the land. Moses said, It isn't appropriate to do so, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to Yah our God. Behold, if we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, won't they stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yah our God as he shall command us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to Yah your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. Pray for me. Moses said, Behold, I am going out from you. I will pray to Yahweh that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. Only don't let Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to Yah. Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to Yah. Yah did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from the people. There remained not one. Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and he didn't let the people go. Swarms. In this fourth plague, we see several shifts in pattern that make it different from the first three. All of the first three plagues were initiated with Aaron's staff, but for this fourth one, the Bible just says that Yah did it. Another significant difference is that the Israelites experienced the first three plagues right along with the Egyptians, but beginning with this fourth plague, we see that Yah begins to make a distinction between his people and the Egyptians by only afflicting the Egyptians. The word used for this plague in the original Hebrew is another one for which we don't know the exact meaning. The word used is he'arob, which simply means swarms, and can be used of any swarming insect. Many theories abound, including mosquitoes, blood-sucking dog flies, and beetles. It actually could have been any and all of them. With the biblical text only indicating swarms, there could have been swarms of many different kinds of insects plaguing the Egyptians. What we do know is that everyone, including Pharaoh, recognized this plague as being of supernatural origin, directly from the hand of Yah, and that they also recognized that he was making a distinction by not afflicting his own people. As for what sort of idolatry Yah was addressing with this plague, that is also less clear since we don't know the exact nature of the swarms. One possibility is the idolatry of nationalism. The Egyptians, like other pagan cultures of the day, believed they were superior because their gods were superior. Having plagues affecting everyone in the region was one thing, but to have an unknown god making distinctions between them and his own people in their land was particularly insulting. This plague seemed to be against Egypt itself. Another possibility is the idolatry of comfort. Egyptians attributed their health and well-being to any number of gods and goddesses, and to have swarms of biting insects follow immediately on the heels of the burrowing insects of the third plague must have given them pause regarding their favored gods or goddesses' ability to protect them and make their lives comfortable. One final possibility is the more literal idolatry of the scarab beetle, whose deification is still seen even today in Egypt. 
The scarab is a kind of dung beetle that feeds on a variety of decaying organic material, including dead flesh. Modern-day farmers know that if they have animals that are generating a lot of feces throughout the year, they need to get used to seeing dung beetles arrive in swarms, as local populations are attracted by the smell. It is possible that the vast number of decaying frogs from the second plague were used by Yah to draw these beetles to swarm in unprecedented numbers. Scarab beetles are often seen pushing a round ball of dung in front of them, and the Egyptians frequently used this imagery to picture one of their gods pushing the sun across the sky, thereby attributing the life-giving gift of the sun to a false deity. These scarabs have mandibles that can saw through wood, and in large numbers they can be more destructive than termites. This could explain why the Bible indicates in verse 24 that the land was ruined by these swarms, rather than commenting on the misery of the people, which would be expected if they were biting insects. How about us? Over the past few days, we have delved fairly deeply into attributing gifts of Yah to other sources, so hopefully we have already repented of any forms of that we have found in our lives. Are there any ways that we have made national pride into an idol? Do we feel we deserve divine blessings more than people of other nationalities? Or what about our own comfort? Are we giving it more importance than obedience to any of Yah's commands, thereby, thereby making it an idol in our lives? Let's heed the warnings from this fourth plague and repent of these forms of idolatry as well.